PGA of America is one of the world's largest working sports organizations, with golf in the U.S. an $84 billion industry. The group is made up of 29,000 PGA professionals who teach, play, and compete at golf courses across the country. It started a new chapter last night with a new leader at the helm. Susie Whaley was sworn in as the first female president in the organization's 102-year history. We spoke to Whaley at the Country Club at Mirasol in Florida about fighting for her place in the male-dominated sport and how she plans to change it for the better. What's your first golf memory? I was on a driving range at a golf course where my parents played golf in my swimsuit hitting golf balls with the boys from the pool. <laughs> As a young girl growing up in Syracuse, New York, Susie Whaley craved sunshine, skiing, and outdoor sports. But she found her true passion on the driving range. Some of the boys I swam with were like, come on, we're gonna go hit some golf balls, you wanna come? And I said, yeah, absolutely. Sure enough, my mom got called off the course because I was in the wrong attire. And thankfully, I had this amazing mom who, instead of yelling at me for being in the wrong clothes, said, do you like this? And I said, I actually love it. The Title IX era was just beginning, so Whaley competed on a boys' high school golf team since there wasn't one for the girls. Still, gender wasn't an issue until Whaley tried entering a tournament and found it was only for boys. And what again, did you think then? Uh, you know, I didn't think it was fair. And I remember thinking, well, I don't understand. I just want to play golf. I, I want to have fun playing golf just like they do. Uh, but we didn't dwell on that in my house. And my parents ended up moving clubs where I was allowed to play, right? So there was just always this support that if you want to do it, go do it the best you can. And, and that's really the way my sister and I both grew up. We weren't afraid to fail. With that support behind her, Whaley played collegiate golf. She then passed on law school to go to PGA Tour School. She competed in some LPGA Tour events where she met her husband, Bill, also a PGA professional, and they started a family. That's when Whaley realized she wanted more opportunities to play. I watched my husband play in these tournaments literally weekly, and it was aggravating. <laughs> I wanted to play against him, and I, I wanted to win. And uh, Just a little competitive, we're, we're Susie. Competitive you just family. a little bit of competitiveness <laughs> to you. Bill encouraged her to join the PGA of America. The idea that um, we always say behind every strong man, there's a strong woman. It seems like behind every strong woman, <laughs> there's also a strong man. That you yeah. need that support. We, we have a great, my husband and I have a great relationship, and he has never not supported me or a decision I've made or helped me get up when when I've fallen. Uh, check out the third shot here at the par 5 18. In 2002, while working as a head golf pro in Connecticut, Whaley became the first woman to qualify for a PGA Tour event in 58 years, and just the third ever. This was at the 10th, and a nice birdie for Susie Whaley. We celebrated, and um, about two minutes after I had signed my scorecard finishing the event, I had a phone call. Uh, and it was from the PJ Tour asking me if I was going to accept the exemption. I said, can I have some time to think about it? <laughs> and there was this lengthy pause on the phone. And he said, well, OK. Why and, did you want to think about it? You know, I hadn't even considered it. I haven't even, I really honestly had never imagined that they would allow a woman to play on the PGA Tour. The win kicked off a media storm, with Whaley fielding about 3,500 interviews. Three months later, she still hadn't decided on playing. I was a woman, and how would people see that? I was representing club professionals, uh, my peers, across the country, and that's a huge responsibility. If I'm going right. to tee it up, I'm going to tee it up for real. It was her then nine-year-old daughter, Jen, who made the decision. We were reading a story at, at night, as we always did, and it was about taking opportunities and taking chances and being brave. And when we finished the story, she said, well, then, Mom, why aren't you playing? And I said, well, you know, I am. And I walked down the stairs, and that was the night that's I told simple. my husband I was in. It was that simple. It was that simple. End. Yeah. What a moment for this young lady. No, she won't play the weekend, but it's certainly a week Susie Whaley will never forget. Since then, three other female golfers have competed in a PGA Tour event, and Whaley has spent her career promoting inclusion in the sport. But leading that effort as one of the sport's top instructors wasn't enough. So in 2014, she decided to run for secretary of the PGA of America a path that automatically leads to the presidency. She faced a delegation of 111 men and only three women. Did you face backlash because you were a woman? You know, I had a, I had a 
it was difficult and challenging, and I'm sure, but nobody ever would speak out against it, right? Nobody else is going to say, they're not going to say. But that's usually know. how it is. Nobody says it to your right. face. So, I mean, you can sit there and you can kind of wallow in the what ifs. Um, I just wasn't willing to go there. I wanted to share what I could accomplish. I wanted to share why I was doing it. I want to get more clubs in people's hands. Uh, I want to make sure the game looks more like the communities we serve. Susie Whaley is the newly elected secretary of the PGA of America. Whaley got the votes needed, becoming the first woman elected a national officer of the PGA of America. My daughter grabbed my hand. She goes, Mom, you won. I go, no, we have to. She's like, no, read it again. And I looked up and I, it was like, it almost, it takes your breath away um, because it's humbling and it's exciting and it's an enormous responsibility and it's one I was ready for. A month before the election, the PGA of America fired its president for using sexist language on social media. Four years later, it is Whaley taking over that role. One of our biggest challenges, I think, which I look at as an enormous opportunity, is getting more people on our golf courses. We want to welcome women to golf courses. We want more junior girls and junior boys playing golf. How do you make golf more diverse? We try at every avenue to make sure that people know they're welcome, that golf is affordable in certain places around the country where we can help you find that. Right. So can you wear sneakers? Absolutely. Do you have to have a golf outfit? No, you do not. Do you have to have equipment? No. Most facilities across the country have equipment for you. Um, you can just walk right in the door and do it. I want you to realize that this is for you too. Inclusivity in a sport known for its exclusivity. And while that's something Whaley learned firsthand, for her, golf was never about breaking down barriers. It was and is about the love of the game. Do you ever look back and think, what if you'd stayed in the pool instead of going to the driving <laughs> range that day in the bathing suit? You know what, you, you do think about things like that in your life. When you think about the turns you take, I'm blessed and, and I have this amazing association that has given me opportunities that uh, are tremendous. And, and giving back to that is something that I cherish. It, it's just given me so much. I, I'm just incredibly grateful. And she continues to give back. She still teaches yeah. whenever she can. And I have to say, you spend five minutes with her. You just want to play golf. The sport yeah. is lucky to have yeah. her. Yeah. I just I just love that her daughter, her nine-year-old daughter, was the wind beneath her wings. And her husband yeah. Yeah. is her caddy. And she has two girls. And you can see oh. that everything is about showing them an yes. example of how yeah. to live. And it shows you the importance of parental support, that story. It really yeah. does. Without a doubt.